Welcome back to the High Value Writing Channel. I'm Christopher, your host for this series of videos on quality documentation. So today we're going to talk about terms and definitions in quality management system documentation. This one's pretty important, so stick around. So quality management systems are just full of documents. And each of these documents is likely written by different authors. And each of these authors uses different tone, different style, different vocabulary, and they're not always so clear for the reader. So let me know in the comments if this has ever happened to you. You're reading a technical document or a quality management system document, and you're reading and you get to a specific word where you're just like, huh? What? What does that mean? So what do you do? Well, you go, hopefully your organization has a standard, and you go and look on that standard where the definitions live, and you try to find what that word means, and you don't find it. So now what do you do? Well, you go to your supervisor or your coworker, preferably your supervisor, and you say, hey, what does this word mean? I'm, I'm so confused, what does this mean? And he's like, oh, well, it means blah, blah, blah. Are you sure? How do you know? I know your boss is great and knows his or her stuff, but do they really? Do they really know the definition? Um, there's only one way to be sure, and that is to establish a standard in your organization that defines these terms used in your quality management system. And some organizations may include the terms and definitions as like a glossary or appendix of your tier one document or your quality manual. And other organizations may include them in SOPs or in an SOP or a tier two document. If you're not sure what I mean by tier one or tier two documents, just check out this video about QMS documentation structure. So why is defining your terms in your QMS so important? Well, it comes down to risk management. You wanna make sure that everyone in your organization has a common understanding of what you're talking about when you refer to a specific term. Many organizations have quality management systems and not all organizations define things the same. So there are common, common definitions that are from the standard and some organizations may say, when we're talking about a specific term, please refer to the standard. But not all organizations do that and other organizations might have proprietary processes or technology they develop in-house that has its own special vocabulary. And so when you have that situation, you wanna make sure that those terms are well-defined in a document that everyone has access to. For example, let's assume that your is our manufacturing facility and you have multiple pieces of equipment on your manufacturing floor that produce parts. And maybe all of these machines are exactly the same with one difference, that they produce a different size part. So let's call these a G wisdom a thing. So maybe G wisdom a thing number one produces small parts and G wisdom a thing number two produces medium parts. G wisdom a thing three produces bigger parts. And in your work instruction, you tell the operators or the people on the floor, go grab raw material and put it in the G wisdom thing. You need to make sure that you've defined which one. So maybe in your terms and definitions, your glossary, your index, your appendix, or your SOP that defines your term and de terms and definitions, that you clearly spell out what that means. Now that is kind of a, a silly example, but it illustrates the importance of making sure that everyone has a common understanding of exactly what you're talking about. So let's now talk about the difference between global and local definitions. So in your standard, there are very common terms used within uh, specific industries. And so maybe you have a standard like ISO 13485 for medical devices that has definitions defined in the standard. And some organizations may choose to just refer to that definition in the standard. And that is totally acceptable. However, there may be, as I mentioned before, specific terms and vocabulary that are specific to your organization or to your process. Now, let's say 
you have a large company and it has multiple locations. And let's say one of those locations produces the raw material for another location where they incorporate that raw material into a finished product. So terms and definitions that are applicable to that first location may not be applicable to the second location. So when we talk about global definitions, we mean terms and definitions that apply to the entire company. And local would be only applicable to those instances of your company, which you should define in your quality manual, of which locations where those terms are applicable. And you can define those in the specific process documents or the SOPs for that process at that location. Now, another problem that I've encountered uh, several times with local definitions is you may have an SOP that has a global definition in it, and then there is an SOP, or excuse me, like a work instruction or a test protocol that also has a definition section for terms that are used in that document, and they actually reference a global definition. Now, this is bad. So if you already have a document that has a global definition, you don't need to repeat it in the definitions of that document. The problem is there's a risk involved. So let's say somebody like me who loves to edit quality documents and improve them because I believe in continuous improvement. And I look at that definition and I'm like, oh, that doesn't really roll off the tongue correctly. So I'll make a little change here so that it's easier to read. Well, now my global definition and my local definition are out of sync. And this is bad. This is really bad because it opens the door for nonconformances or the potential of your not meeting customer requirements. So if you have a global definition in all of the documents that you reference that global definition, just reference the standard, reference the SOP, reference the quality manual for the terms. If there are specific terms to that process, like I mentioned before, a different location, define them in that SOP. But just make sure that's the only location where they're defined and then refer back to that document. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, so um, if you like this, oh, hot tip. I wanna make one little hot tip. If you're a new company and you're just now developing your quality system documents, one easy thing to do in your quality documentation, in your standard, or excuse me, in your terms and definitions SOP, you can define a style, a, a stylized way of representing those terms. So let's say you use all caps or italicize, italicize the words, or maybe caps and italicized. The point is it's easy to create a style that identifies that keyword. So as I'm reading the document and I come across that style, I immediately know as a reader, hey, that's a term defined globally in my quality system documentation. It's just an instant visual cue that helps the reader understand this word's important or this term has a definition. It's a great, a great tip to use. All right, that's it. So if you, uh, if you like this video and you uh, wanna give us a like, be sure to click that thumbs up um, and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss future videos. Me again, thanks for watching. We really want to support our community of high value writers. So we have lots of new learning opportunities and discounts for 2024. Let me tell you about them quickly. If you like what you're learning in the videos, a lot of that is described in the high value writing book. And here is a coupon for 20% off code high value writer. We also have the book as an electronic format. So wherever you may live, you can use this code to get half off. We also, of course, have the book on Amazon if that's easier for you. To get even deeper and to really practice your skills in a more interactive way, we have e-courses now. I'm in all of them talking to you about how to make revisions to make sure that your writing is meeting the purposes that you want. So check it out. Again, 20% off with High Value Writer. I hope to see you in class. If you take a class, you get the chance to leave questions. I'll answer you in 24 hours. And you get the chance to talk with other participants who have taken it as well in the discussion board. So check out these opportunities. Let me know if you have a question. And I hope to see you soon, either here or in one of these classes.